Alright, hello everyone and welcome to the AEW discussion. I am your host and AEW enthusiast Dougie Doug. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing Dynamite, November 23rd, 2022 episode, a Thanksgiving Eve edition of Dynamite. And, um, well, there was no Thanksgiving themed uh, Street Fighter matches or anything like that. Instead, this episode of Dynamite was focused on the fallout from fall, from full year, um, which would start with a best of seven series between the elite and tough triangle over the aw world trios titles titles and with that we'll go ahead and get right into the action starting with the aw all atlantic championship match orange cassidy versus jake hager so cassidy kicked off the entering portion of the show by defending the all atlantic title against jake hager hager dominated the match for the most part overpowering cassidy for the majority i was about before they come back from cassidy sparked by tornado ddt um yeah he withstood a final attempt at an ankle lock on uh, Rock Tagger of Norwich Punch and rolled him up for the win. Um, interesting enough how obsessed Tagger was with the purple hat in the match. Honestly, it's kind of funny, but it, fe- <laughs> it feels like an unnecessary addition to the match. Like, Cassidy with the shades is fine, but I think what makes it work is the fact that he only does it like once. He doesn't try to make it a thing throughout the match. So, Hager with the hat, I think he just needs to set it on a ring post and just leave it there. Um... <laughs> After the match, the factory appeared, only to be interrupted by the return of the House of Black. Malachi, Brody, and Buddy laid waste to everyone, literally. Uh, they stood united atop the ramp to close out the segment. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an effective manner of reint- or effective way to reintroduce a faction and have them make an immediate impact. The House of Black looked like an unstoppable force force in its path of rage. Uh, Black and company laid out the good guys and the bad guys, which is great to see because Black and House should show no allegiance to anyone. And they should just run through every everyone. <clears throat> And they earned a huge ovation for the fans for their actions. Uh, For the first time since his debut against Cody Rhodes, Black looked like the star that he should have been when he did debut. Uh, More of this, please, Tony Khan. As for the match, decent match between one of the best in-ring performers in AEW, that being Cassidy, and a dude who rarely competes in single matches, that being Hager. Best of seven series, the Elite vs. Death Triangle match two. So the Elite lost the Death Triangle at full gear thanks to a shot to the face with the Timekeeper's Hammer from Ray Phoenix. And Wednesday night, that same weapon would once again be the downfall of the Elite. Uh, the match was the typical action packed party match. Um, and also featured the Elite getting a little too cute, mocking CM Punk, and receiving a chorus of booze for it. In case you didn't know, they were in Chicago. Uh, still, the guys involved do this type of match well, keeping fans engaged and pulling off high action in the process. The real story of the match, though, was the finish, which saw Penta uh, take a page out of Pac's book and win using the hammer, <coughs> improving the Death Triangle to 2 0 in the series. Now, this is probably setting up a come from behind win for the Elite, in which they will win uh, the trio's titles in the end, but it would probably be better for Death Triangle to emerge victorious from this. Regardless, not a strong angry effort from these teams, and potentially even better than the first, depending on how you felt about this one compared to the first. Honestly, I thought it was just as good. I don't know if it was better, but uh, to each his own on that one right there. And I am curious to see, <clears throat> since you do have a best of seven series, I think ultimately the best way to make this thing interesting is to throw in some scenarios. We've seen the hammer come into play. So maybe throw out the disqualifications, throw out the counters. I mean, I'm down for some tornado tag team action. I think that could be really fun and really wild if you have all six guys eligible at the same time. But I think, yeah, that's really their AEW special to try to keep this thing interesting. If you leave it as just a standard six-man tag team match, it's going to get stale after the third match. So I think after the third match, start introducing some stipulations to try to keep things interesting. <coughs> And then the show concludes with a Ring of Honor World Championship match, Tomuro Ishii versus Chris Jericho. Mm. And this was a real hard hitting match that capped off tonight's action. Uh, defined by blood drawn strikes early and evolved into a dramatic encounter that saw two tough competitors throw everything they had at each other and before Jericho would trap the stone pit bull <coughs> in the Lion Tamer. And then, uh, tap him out to retain his title. For all the criticism about Jericho and his overexposure, which at times is fair, he 
put on a great performance here. He broke out the strong style, put, had a great match of Ishii, and wrapped up the show by selling a hard ride from Claudio Castagnoli. That will likely um, set up a match at Ring of Honor's final battle for the world title, and hopefully be the last match in their field. Now this was Jericho's best performance perhaps in the last year. Um, he doesn't really, he's, he's not going to have very many physical wars left in him at this point in his career, but this match certainly fit his skill set well, and maybe that's because he was battling a proven tough guy like Ishii, maybe that just moved him just a little bit extra motivation to be, but, or 52, but then again, you know, you can generally kind of get away with it, um, but Jericho's still doing compete, um, and hopefully after final battle too, what happened with the BCC, I didn't talk about the uh, Regal, <laughs> Moxley, Brian Danielson interaction at the start of the show because it really wasn't that interesting of an interaction like Regal spoke but he didn't speak enough and then uh, Moxley came out and I was very curious to see if Regal would get physical but then Danielson stepped in the middle and tried to play Keith Peacekeeper, Peacekeeper, and he had a very interesting choice in words, pulling some personal stuff and then slapping Moxley in the face. Interesting way to try to defuse the situation, but I guess it worked because Moxley didn't strike him, but also Moxley told him to basically turn and leave the ring and never come back. Now, I don't... <laughs> I don't know exactly what I don't know exactly how that's gonna play out either. I don't know what Rico's contract is is in AEW. I talked about this on the full gear episode. It would be nice if Rico's contract with AEW, you know, would expire in time for War Games, which is this Saturday, so Rico could do the War Games announcement. Pipe dream, unlikely, most likely, but um, yeah, one can hope. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see what happens going forward with that. Uh, Claudio and. Wheeler Yuta are also members of the BCC, so I feel like ultimately they probably should have been involved in a segment too, since you know this <laughs> this kind of you know what to do with William Rigo is probably it to follow the find the future of the faction if it lasts. Um, and then I, then there was also the big announcement too that Thunder Rosa and AEW reached an agreement to for to have her forfeit the title because her injury recovery there is I guess the timeline is unknown on when she'll be back. So rather than just slapping an intern label on Jamie Hader, calling her the intern champion, um, they decided to make her the uh, actual women's champion. So now Jamie Hader is the AEW women's world champion, and Tony Storm her reign was. You know, rewritten in the books from interim to actual women's title reign so I'm glad they did that show some respect to Storm and also I'm glad they do this for Hater too look I like the interim concept it's cool and all but honestly I think yeah you're just better off having the champion forfeit the title and, and re go recover from their injury and then come back later on it's probably for the better I, again I like the interim idea but probably just for the best to forfeit the title and with that that will go ahead and wrap up this episode of AEW Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.